Hello, Zane. Dun, 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 Welcome. Dun, dun. <laughs> Law and order. <clears throat> Welcome to Over the Surface. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, Franny. Of course. Are you excited, nervous? Uh, uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm also nervous. I usually, um, I, I, you told me it was kind of a more serious tone instead mm -hmm. of like a comedy based, and I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm already not the best at comedy based. And so serious, it just makes it harder. But I like the challenge. And normally I would say no, but you asked. So I was like, I got to do it. And, and, and we'll get through it. I think we'll be good. I you, think we're going to be it, so it can't good. Be, it can't be that crazy of questions. Like this, I was I was saying this before. This <laughs> looks like I got canceled so hard. And I'm doing my comeback interview. And I just have a whole PR team around me just like watching every move I make. Like make sure you say you, the right thing exactly, right now. Exactly, yeah. But I think we'll be good. We're, we're in our apartment, you know, we're not in a giant studio, so it feels a little bit more homey yeah. and uh, chill, so. Are you ready for this million dollar question? <laughs> I just feel like you're extra nervous about it. <laughs> I just, I, I, I have no idea what you're gonna ask. I just, I, I think, uh, no, we'll be good. We'll, yeah, just ask it. You and ready? it's a million dollar question, so it's it, it has to be a million dollar question, and you can answer it any way you want. It could be one, word you can elaborate on it you could sit there and think for five minutes if you have to okay okay all right yeah ready uh-huh do you love yourself <laughs> i was not expecting that one um do i love myself i it's like a love-hate <laughs> relationship with myself right yeah, yeah there's times where i'm like you know what like zane you got this i'll look in the mirror i'm like dude look you're beautiful you fucking you're funny you're you have a good personality you have a lot of friends you're good, and then part of me is just like, "Damn, you fucking suck." And I and that and that comes with like just, just I feel like the past few years, just like my anxiety's gone so bad, and I've never had it before, but it's gone so bad where like I'm constantly fighting with myself. Mm -hmm. Do I love myself or do I not? But I think in the end of the day, when it comes down to it, I think I really do love myself. It's just it's it's a constant battle, though. It's probably something too where you're obviously gonna have better days. Yeah and worse days and there's gonna be days where you'll beat yourself up about certain things yeah and just I mean, like, that's normal though that's everybody i'm sure there's yeah. not one person i think in this world that like uh, always loves himself 100 percent of the time yeah you know what i mean no 100 it, it, just back and forth and medication helps which i'm on right now so that helps a lot that does so, help yes yeah, if so you I'm, need I'm it then that's that. good exactly so from like a i like to ask <laughs> I'm like, giant, bought a giant cup of wine <laughs> yeah, medication helps a lot and by medication i mean fucking alcohol i know we're pouring it he goes yeah, you could do a little more. I'm like, okay, got it. Um, so I've asked, you know, a lot of my guests this, but from kind of like a, I guess from a scale or a percentage of like one to a hundred percent, where mm -hmm. do you think you fall on how much you love yourself? Like, do you think it's like 50%, 60%? Um, I don't want to say 50% because that's boring. And I feel like most people would say that. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to go with 75%. That's boring too. I'm going to do 76%. Okay. Yeah. So you're being really specific. Yeah, seventy six percent. I think that's a that's a really good percentage because like sixty percent is like crazy. That's that's like that's a problem. Yeah. That I would need to figure out. <laughs> like that's 70, an issue. Yeah. Seventy, I think, is normal. You know, somebody that loves themselves seventy five percent, twenty five percent, they're like, fuck you. It's that means you're a human. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So seventy six percent. Okay, so let's just take it back a little bit. So I was actually telling David and Carlos earlier today. You know, I feel like we are all always going out. We don't actually ever, especially me and you, we never have like actually had a serious conversation. No. Or, you know what I mean? No, I, the only time we've ever seen each other, I think is when we're all out, or we're, like, we're at a bar drinking. or we're at a yeah, party and we're, and we're like, drinking. And hanging out and exactly, stuff. Yeah. And I told David, I was like, this is exactly why I want to do the show. Yeah. I feel like it's not common to do these things, especially with people in LA, especially people that you like are always going out with. Yeah. You know, taking it back a little bit. Also, don't mind me if I ask a lot of questions about you know, your upbringing and stuff, because I don't really know, because I know you mentioned you're from Florida, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, so when did you start social media? Uh, so I started social media about like, I would say 12 years ago with Heath. Okay, um, so how old were you? I, I'm gonna say late 19, early 20s. I, um, you know, we all had Instagram, but like mm -hmm. I was not like a, like really active on it, on active on any platform that I had. Okay. I was just like tweet or Instagram here and there, and um, and then the app Vine came out. You know, you know what Vine yeah, is. Right? Yeah. Vine came out, and okay, so you were a Viner. Yeah, I didn't I was know a that. Yeah, I was a Viner. Okay. Heath, Heath and I had a joint account called Zane and Heath. Okay. We were posting these fucking atrocious vines. I mean, now that I look back, I'm like, God, these are so bad. But they were like funny at the time. Mm -hmm. it, 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 that's a perfect example of you have to start somewhere. Like yeah. those vines were like you had to start somewhere, right? And we would we would do these vines on our break. So we would both work, and on our break we would meet up, 
get like a vine done <laughs> for that. 30 minutes to an hour and then and then we both go back to work we found the app at, like when it was out for maybe only three months okay we saw like marcus johns on there and britney furlan remember all those people yeah yeah there were there there were our king and king bash there were the only people on the app there was like was maybe so crazy. we saw 15 viners on the app like on our like mm -hmm. like popular page and heath and i just started i'm not gonna say we naturally uh, organically grew yeah, yeah, yeah. but but this isn't like as horrible as like like buying followers or you know whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but i do want to say i don't think i've ever we've ever said how we how we did it so we i think there's like two separate hashtags we'd go through we'd go through first vine hashtag first vine hashtags mm -hmm. we'd go through the hashtag and then we would just like every post on that wow. hashtag of all these like different people posting on the hashtag right like their first vine and out of all the people that we would all the vines that we would like we'd probably get like 50 to 100 followers and we just would do that every day so we weren't like forcing anybody to come so we you were figured just, the system we, out <laughs> exactly we were we were trying to figure out figure out a way to promote ourselves for yeah. free and that was i think the best way to promote yourself like on the app yeah. without having to shove it down people's throat we would just be like like oh here look we exist they, this person liked your uh liked your vine oh that's crazy and we were doing that for months i mean you guys kind of went full throttle with it you guys started and you're like okay let's like do this. Yeah, we we started once we st so we were you know, obviously we were doing it for free. We were still mm -hmm. working. We weren't making money on it. And after a year, our first brand deal was like two hundred and fifty dollars for this like dating app called Grouper. I'll never forget this day. <laughs> and we like we um we asked our our friend uh, like our beautiful one of our beautiful girlfriends that we had. We we're like, uh, hey, you want to make like. 25 bucks just help us with this vine 25 bucks because we, you know we had to give a little piece of like yeah. the money we we're like can you help us just be the girl in it and we like did this vine we posted it and we're like and we got paid right it didn't mm -hmm. really hit us until like that money went into our bank account we're like that's insane like we never we didn't know that people made money on social media yeah. at all we didn't think so it, was, like, it existed exactly yeah and then our next one was like 750 dollars and the next one's 1500 we're like growing yeah. what is happening like why are people why are brands <laughs> Coming to, I, we didn't even know brands had contact with people. Mm -hmm. Like I thought it was such a separate like entity from the whole world. It got to the point where we didn't have to work anymore. We just like just went to school. So were you? So you guys were in college? Were you guys we were in college at the same in uh, Florida. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we were, what were you going to school for? We were both going for criminal justice. That's so, uh, so cool. Heath, okay, so I would have never guessed. That. No, no, you would have never guessed because I would have never done that. I only did it because Heath was doing it because I had I had no plans. That's so. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I um I didn't want to do. Yeah. I was working in hotels and hospitality, okay. but I didn't want to go to school for it because it just sounded so boring, mm -hmm. and I didn't want it. So I'd rather, if I was going to go to college, I'd rather just be with a friend okay. and enjoy it. And I, that yeah. was with and that was so with you were, Heath. You were in the same classes basically and everything. The same, pretty much the same criminology yeah. classes. I'm so glad that I did that because we had like we, we have the funniest stories now of, from all the classes that we took together in like in our community college that we went to yeah so i'm really glad we did it i feel like it was like the perfect i feel like if that never happened this whole journey would have never happened yeah. like i think we both made the right decisions, decisions and the right yeah. moves as friends to really just continue and it's funny because we were never friends in high school we like actually didn't like each other oh, wow. in high school hung out once after high mm -hmm. school and college he invited me out to fishing and to smoke cigarettes and i was like let's do it baby <laughs> I'm confused like, why you, I'm confused yeah. why you want to ask me to hang out. Like, I, dude, I was a weird kid. I was very shy, very weird, no friends. I okay, had, like, so you were more um, like to yourself. Yeah, I, I didn't want to be to myself. I wanted friends. I just was Aww. such a weird kid, and it. I, I think it all has to do with like my upbringing. It's really. I, I won't talk about my upbringing now. It's it's really dark, but it, like okay. it was such a shitty upbringing where it like caused me to um, not be open more close it off to like yeah. everyone and, and that wasn't on purpose it was like really like i was just so shy and it was just so anxious i guess yeah and um i was like that throughout uh, high school and after college i made like my first friend first two friends was social media like ev like was it really appealing to you when you were in high school or when you were younger or you were just i think it was high school probably. yeah no yeah, no yeah, i now. never watched like youtube videos i never watched people's like content so it was ever. just like really it was out just of random yeah heath and i were like oh let's just make these funny videos. It was fun for us because there was nothing to do out there. We just found the joy in just making these stupid little videos and like all our friends would see it and they'd be like, Zane, that was so funny. We're like, thank you. Like only 50 people saw, but yeah. that's fucking awesome. We just like kept on going. We really believed in it. It's crazy because I normally don't believe myself in a lot of things, but for some reason, Heath and I were just like, let's just really have fun and don't try too hard and just like 
keep going. And that was before like money was ever even a question. Like we just, yeah, we're like, this is really fun. And we're having a lot of eyes see this. Do you think, you know, start, cause you said like you were like really awkward and like yeah. more to yourself. Do you think once you started social media, you were, you felt more confident about yourself and you felt better about yourself? hundred percent. You like, it like was like a 180. It's such a, st I hate saying this. This is like the cringiest <laughs> thing ever. I think I feel, I feel like I was reborn again once I moved out of Florida. Because oh, wow. I had such like a shitty fucking yeah, just childhood yeah. and life. Yeah. Middle school, elementary school, high, every everything was really bad. Bad. Yeah. And um, f but I, funniest stories, funniest stories. But like it was bad. Yeah. And um, coming out here and then meeting like my fucking my best friends who are like my family. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm so pissed that I didn't get to experience what I'm experiencing now. When you were younger. The first twenty years of my life. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like I missed like half of my life. That's why mm. I. That's why I'm so crazy right now. That's why I'm like. I'm always like going out, doing shit, having fun, and I'm 30. You, you feel know? like you feel like you gotta like make up for exactly. the years like, that you lost. Yeah, a little bit. exactly. And I don't think anybody will ever understand that because yeah. people are like, "You didn't you go to college? Like, didn't you? <laughs> didn't you, you really do experience this that?" It's like, no, yeah. I didn't get to experience any of that. Like, college, it was Damn. a community college. I went to I went to class, went right back home. Like, there was no crazy like time it's crazy that the city i feel like it is college all the time like it yeah. it, it never sleeps it doesn't matter how old you are there you're is always, something to do almost every night every here, night which is honestly yeah. insane honestly like I, I la sucks but la is the <laughs> best place to go if you feel like you had a very shitty 20 years like for shitty just you hear, school. you heard it here first people. you know what i mean it, it really is like yeah you, you, i mean you will find shitty shitty people every day like you, you'll be surrounded yeah. around shitty people but like once you find that core group mm -hmm. out here there's always something to do and it'll be a lot of fun and even if you're working out here you're going to school it just feels like you're in college and i think that's really fun do you think you know once you moved out here and you found all those friends you just did you just feel like your you know your self-esteem and i guess you loving yourself more just kept going up or did you ever feel like there was a point where you're like oh my god this is so great and then you kind of like fell back down from that um yeah I, so the i would say the first like five six years i definitely was very confident mm -hmm. not overly confident i just definitely learned to love myself more mm -hmm. and it was funny because i loved myself the most when i was in the worst shape the worst shape of my life i looked like shit. my <laughs> fucking i was always scraggly no haircut i looked i looked homeless <laughs> Like the first four or five years of LA, and but I was oh, like so Zane. happy with it. Like it was uh, that was but that's me. That's good though. That's like that, is that was good. Florida Zane just sticking yeah. to his. And then it got to the point where I was like, Zane, you really got to just clean it up. Like I know you want to you want to stay Zane, you want to like be authentic, but like you're yeah. you're looking like shit. Like I would wear shorts to like events. It was bad. It was honestly, it was right after the pandemic. Okay. And I feel like that's so many people to right after the pandemic. I don't know what happened. It just like was a complete 180 flip. Mm -hmm. Like I. The anxiety I had back in like middle school and high school, mm -hmm. which I never thought would come back, came right back, but like three times harder. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like three times harder than I ever had back when I was a kid. Is that when you like you were like, okay, I need to like get on medication for it and uh, stuff? No, I didn't. Uh, I, I was. The, I don't like medication. I try to stay away from medication oh, just okay. because. For I, that specifically. Yeah, I okay. just. I, I too many people tell me, and I've read a lot that like. Once you take it, it's hard to get off it. Or like once you, you take it, you have to keep upping the it. dose. Yeah. And that sounds really dangerous to me. And I know I'm a damn, I fucking, I drank, I, you know, I do, I do things. But like I, yeah. I know like, especially like antidepressants are very hardcore and yeah. I just didn't want to um, like spiral. Like I didn't want to get to a point where I was like, yeah, depending off of depending that to like function it. and exactly. stuff. I mean, I have some friends too that do take medication for it, but I also have friends that are the same way that they're like, I would rather just, you know, deal with it on my own yeah. and figure it out. Yeah, and I, and I have a few friends just like that too. So I get it. It's been helping a lot. But yes, yes, I it went up and then it went, it went right down. Right after the pandemic. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm, I'm learning. I'm always finding out new ways to try to get there. What's really important is like just keeping yourself healthy, working out, mm -hmm. go, walk, uh, going out, going, getting yeah. out of your house and just going for a walk yeah. really, really helps. Um, Do you think the pandemic just like, you know, it made you feel that way because you know, you were like going, going, going probably. And then all of a sudden you just had to stop. And then yeah. it like, I just feel like that, that's kind of what happened with me. I feel like life just actually hit me yeah. and like, it didn't feel real for a little bit. So that when life kind of turned normal, I kind of felt the same way. I felt like I didn't know what to do with myself anymore. I was like, wait, how do I live life again? Exactly. And I was really anxious too. Um, I still am a little anxious, but yeah, and I completely that, the, understand that. Like the that. whole like world, like the whole, internet watching every move you make 100%. throughout the whole thing it's really really stressful and i think that was like a lot to like i had a lot to do with it too it's like i like couldn't leave my house mm. even if i wanted to go to the grocery store like even if i was like you were like what the it, hell yeah, yeah it was like damn okay like i 
literally can't leave my house. Yeah. I can't film anything. I can't work. Um, and I, yeah, that had, that had a lot to do with it too. Do you yeah. think now, you know, you said that it like hit you really bad. Do you think it's gotten better now or do you still kind of feel the same? I'm at like a stagnant where it's like, I have bad days, good days, bad days, good days. I think I'll be there for the rest of my life as long as I'm like taking care of myself and. Um, yeah, and I always say and, this too. I mean, whether you're healing from honestly anything, mm -hmm. I, I always say that it's never linear. I feel like yeah. anytime you're like working towards something, there's you're literally going to like, hit so many damn bumps where you're like, I can't do this anymore. And there's gonna be days you're like, oh my God, this is the best day of my fucking life. Yeah, it's like, what? A, I love what I do. <laughs> and then the next day it's just like, I wanna yeah. fucking quit and go back home. Like this shit, so it's, it's so, um, it's like a roller coaster, especially out here. Being in LA, I feel like, you know, you compare yourself a lot to people and yeah. there's a lot of that. Did you feel at all? Because you know, you got into a group of friends, I mean, that blew up so damn quickly, mm -hmm. I feel like. But did you ever feel like when you're in that you had to like keep up with anyone or did you just feel like oh we're all in this together and like we're just blowing up together um i don't think it was ever a competition between okay. us ever i mean that's I, awesome uh, yeah. it's always it's always been it's always we've always just helped each other whenever somebody wanted to film a video whenever david wanted to vlog whenever heath wanted to post whatever it's mm -hmm. we always helped each other and like David was vlogging for like two years before, like before we even started vlogging, you know what I mean? And we mm -hmm. were always together, always filming stuff, helping him like that. And that, you know, we're yeah. all okay with that. Then we all started making channels and then David helped us all with our videos. Like it, it's never been like that ever. Okay. I think, I think it would have been different if we all met each other as we were doing it. Who knows? Like I, I I've never been yeah. in that situation <laughs> yeah. before, but I know, I feel like I see those situations a lot out here mm -hmm. where these these internet groups they like gather together for the first time and they all have a big following already and then it's like a competition got it yeah and i get it i get it but like yeah. thank god we didn't have to so you never like you that. never felt your self-esteem was affected being in a big group of friends like that on the absolutely internet. not that's awesome um, yeah because i feel like that's <clears throat> like you said it's really i guess it's normal for something like that to happen yeah. i mean i you know I never really had to deal with that either because, like, you know, I kind of grew on social media when I moved into the house with, like, Kian and JC, Corey and Bobby, yeah. and I was the only girl in the house, so there wasn't really competition for me, you yeah. know? I was just the only girl, and then that was it, so... Honestly, I had an advantage. Yeah, like, yeah. I never I never had to, like, worry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess off-camera, you know, I dealt with my own self-esteem issues if I went out and, like, comparing myself to other girls yeah. and stuff, but, yeah, that's really surprising. I honestly, I don't know, I would have thought maybe you know you being like yeah like i don't know sometimes we would get like kind of like annoyed with someone or whatever because i feel like that's so common with like you know everyone growing I mean, up together there's days when like someone's filming and you don't feel like being filmed and you're just like <laughs> you're like really get out dude? of my face you know like yeah. and, that, and that's me i'm saying i'm saying we that's that's yeah. that's usually me uh there would be times when someone's vlogging i'm just like just like get me out of the shot like yeah yeah, yeah. Get, especially since i have like a resting dick face and every time they, people, someone sees me in the shot and i like i just look miserable it's yeah. just because i'm just like chilling there's always something happening mm -hmm. and it can be very overwhelming yeah but i think that's pretty much it just overwhelming sometimes well that's actually you know interesting because I feel like I have to like turn on and off sometimes. Do you feel that way too? I feel like it's more chill now, but back then when everybody it was, was like crazy. My God, yeah, everybody <laughs> had a camera. It was yeah. It was you were always, always on and you always had to just be funny because the camera's on you and that mic is on. Like it and Jason like Jason Nash most likely will not cut out of his vlog. So just you gotta make sure <laughs> that you have to try to be yeah. as funny yeah, and yeah. as as happy as it because once you're not happy in a shot that's like the whole world thinks that you are or miserable, miserable and like something's wrong with yeah, you yeah so yeah. like and that was like for a few years and yeah you, ha you have to learn quick in those situations especially since we're all together and that's like what we did every single day but it was so fun like i would never ask for anything else it was like that's awesome. the best few years of my life that's great that you know you you have that support group out here with friends like that because i know people that don't have that out here in la and i always say like if you can move to la and find that support group and find like that family. I yeah. feel like you're pretty solid out here. But I think when social media comes into play, I feel like the industry, you know, puts that pressure on you like when you're posting and like, do you feel like you have to keep up all the time on social media or are you kind of like, I'm over it. I'm just posting what I want now. Um, lately, it's been more I'm posting if I like the, if I like something or not. Okay. Because I, I, I barely post like Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Like I only post something if I like if it. If you like it. Um, I would like, I wish I could post more. I just like my, feel like my brain is just so, um, just exhausted. 
like just just coming up with ideas and coming up with like funny videos and funny bits whatever it's just like i've been doing it for so, so long yeah. where i just feel like it, i mean it's like it's like a job that you've been doing for the past like five years you're like you're you're just like over it and you want to you want to find something new mm -hmm. that like um that excites you i haven't I feel like I haven't found that yet. The podcast is great. Podcast is fun. It's like I'm we're, I'm with like three of the most comfortable people I've ever like met. So that's e it's easy. You know, I'm 30 and I feel like I still have not reached to what I want to do in my life. Really? There's something I want to do. Yeah, there's something I want to do in my life. I just don't know what it is. You don't know what it is yet. Yeah. Because you guys also. It's, it, it's, I feel like it's in this world. Okay. Like definitely something creative, something behind the camera, something. Okay. I just need to figure out exactly what that is. So, because you guys also have a coffee company, right? Yes. Cremota. So, Cremota, yeah, and you guys do the podcast. Uh -huh. So that was more of like a, I want to say, spontaneous kind of like business venture. Oh, or? Cremota. Um, well, we've we've been talking about coffee, just coffee in general. We didn't know what we wanted to do, but we were just talking okay. coffee for years because Heath and I had a segment for in in my vlogs for like three years where we had a, a segment called coffee talk yeah, yeah. Heath and I would hop in his truck and we'd go to the gas station and we'd grab it like a new coffee of the week we'd grab a Dunkin Donuts coffee we'd grab a uh, La Colombe coffee we'd grab any coffee that we see on the shelf and we try it we'd review it kind of very shitty review we'll like talk, we'll go mm, that's good and then we'll just keep going like we don't even get <laughs> okay. into it whenever we bought like a bottle of coffee or a can of coffee or anything we would get so many people tweets so, uh, in stories, DMs of people buying that coffee of the week, or, or whenever, like whenever we bought a coffee. So you're like, wait, we need to do and something like, with oh coffee. Oh my god, let's like, yeah. why are we buying Dunkin' Donuts coffee every week when we could yeah. just like make our own? Like, you, we we get to find our coffee roaster and find where we want our beans or where we want it's our really beans cool, from, and yeah. like, it, it would be our coffee, and that's exactly what we did. Okay, and right. the podcast was that always something you guys wanted to do too? Yeah, I think the coffee kind of it was. Um, Kind of like They're both playing together, like coincided because yeah. Heath and I, like Heath and I, for maybe a year before we started, we've always like mentioned like, should we do a podcast? And we're like, no, that's crazy. An hour and a half of talking, we can never do that. And we were just so <laughs> back and forth on that. Yeah. And then one day we we're like, you know what? Let's just try it out. It doesn't hurt just to run the cameras and see if we can do it. And we did the first episode. It was shit. And then why was we, it shit? It just what like you it, just it, felt it, like it wasn't nervous. good. It was quite, yeah. yeah, and then I and then that. we did a little planning. We did a, we structured it out a little bit. Yeah. We bullet out what we wanted to talk about, and then we recorded again. And then it was like, okay, this one's better. And then we posted it, and like the feedback we got was wild. That's so, great. And it was and definitely getting that validation from like so like everybody that watched us. Mm -hmm. We were just like, fuck. Okay, let's. Let's just stop vlogging for now because that's just something Keith and I just didn't want to do. Yeah. Forever, especially since like we're getting older, we're thirty, and I feel like it's just better to do a podcast. I feel yeah. like it's more of more something a thirty-year-old would do than a than vlogging. Than vlogging, <laughs> and I'm I, you know I'm not I'm not I'm not um, putting down anybody that vlogs when they're thirty, but yeah. I just I think he, in Heath and I's brain it makes more sense to do. A yeah, podcast. I mean even me, I'm I mean I'm twenty five, <laughs> but I. I haven't even done social media as long as you have or yeah. like most I feel like creators have but I'm already burnt out from vlogging I just felt like if someone was watching me like cook or like do something I was like they don't want to watch me do especially this. when you're by yourself it's, yeah. it's so hard and, and you know since we're all together like trying to trying to find people to help film with you <sighs> I, like I feel like such a burden when I'm asking anybody to help me film with a video so I just end up not asking anybody I try to do it myself and then it's just like fuck this is a horrible video I, I scrap it I know it. I yeah. always told like I always said I was like creators or youtubers who were able to figure it out like on their own yeah and, like you lucked out i respect <laughs> the fuck out of people the creators that f film everything by, by themselves i can't do it like i think someone does a great like a great job is like emma chamberlain yeah she fully <clears throat> like was full throttle on her own and she did it yeah exactly or cody co he has like three separate channels where he's like cody co's a great example shit by himself. Too, like, yeah Imagine I had three separate channels where I'm posting on every single channel every week and it's something different and I'm just sitting in front of a camera like that's that's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's like you really you, maybe, you, you maybe gotta that's, figure it out. Maybe that's what you end up doing. Have no, more no, channels. <laughs> no, 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 no. No way. No, I I wanna be behind the camera. I like there's okay. some there's a part of me wants to be behind the camera. I producing, directing. I think directing in some I've always I've always fancied like watching like high end commercials for brands. Interesting. Like, okay. Like, like I love watching like Chanel perfume commercials. <laughs> like the way it's like filmed and edited and the the star that they have, like the celebrity that they have in there and the way they 
it, I there's something about like high end commercials like that where I just want to be a part of it, but I feel like that's such a Matt uses the word all the time. It's a um, a cutthroat. Cutthroat. Oh, cutthroat, yeah. Like, I, I, definitely that industry, you're, they are not just picking anybody. They're not going to pick some random person that, like, wants to do it. They, they're, they have people behind there. It's like really there competitive. That have yeah. been doing this shit for years. And I'd have to, I, I have a lot of years to, like, have to learn about that shit. But you better just get like, started. And I'm just, the thing is that, <laughs> it's like, I'm, why, why go that route when I'm, like, doing something right now? And I feel like I've, like, I've been, I've been trying to craft, craft. Mm -hmm. well, who am I? Uh, craft I, I, I've been doing this shit for 10 years like yeah. why hop onto something else when like I've kind of figured it out like I I, I know what yeah. to do I mean you could always do it as like a just like as a passion project like you know something yeah. on the side where you're like wait I'm actually really passionate about this and even if it doesn't make me any money and if it doesn't really go that well it makes me happy but it or is it not gonna make you happy? No, here's the thing. No, no, it's not. No, it's not that. It would make me really happy putting out like putting out uh, yeah. content like that. It's more. It would cost me so much money. Oh, okay. Because You're like, I don't know if I want to do that. Because whenever I want to, whenever I have a passion project that I want to do, it costs me so much money, and I like it, it, it. It's hard to get that return. Yeah. If you're not, unless you post on YouTube, but if, like YouTube, you, like you're not gonna get any money back, especially the music I want to put in shit. Like. I mean, if you ever do something like that, you should do it for a Kermoda and just yeah. you know do one insane commercial for Kermoda. Yeah. And How funny would that be? The, the, the thing for Kermoda, for me, like in my head, it's hard yeah. because it's a, it's a beverage. Mm. Like any food or beverage, my brain doesn't like, I don't know what to do like when it comes to a commercial, but like clothing, Perfumes Cologne, and stuff, perfume. yeah. Perfume. You know what I mean? There's that, yeah. that little section like of... Like that high-end look, uh, come yeah. On. Yes, I, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's like what, what I would want to do, but like that should just cost too much money. It's, it's like a dream that yeah. I feel like I don't think I would ever get to unless a lot of money comes in. Like oh, so much money where like I'm able... You could just to blow throw it. ...to 100,000. Yeah. Let's do a, shit, a Gucci commercial. A hundred thousand. Like I would have to... And I would do the commercial, <laughs> and I would put Gucci in the end, like they paid me to do it. That's so. I was funny. even thinking about that too. In my head, I was like, "What if I did these mock commercials and just yeah. threw in the brand, and people think they, they paid me, but they didn't?" And I just like. But that's so funny. I think that's a great way to have a resume too. Is like I just mean, do yeah, mock just commercials. Do, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Or get just do, started. Or just do it on your phone. I don't know. <laughs> Shit pops off these days when you just film it on your phone. People like watching phone stuff and uh, um. Well, Billie Eilish iPhone. filmed. Billy Eilish Her and Selena video. Gomez both filmed like two whole music videos just on an iPhone. What what music video did she uh, film? Selena Gomez was the um, the one about Justin Bieber that blew up. I uh, I had to lose you to love me song. It was like right. literally just stationed right there, and it was in black and white. Oh, and, and, uh, and the is the Billy Eilish one the mall? Yeah, the mall one. Yeah. Yeah, but that one. Those are iPhones. That's a look though. They, like I know that they wanted to go for that look. But if you want it to look really nice, it's like you can never get that on an iPhone, right? I don't know. But honestly, I've seen really good shit on iPhone. Like I've, yeah. I've, I've seen videos on YouTube and it's a shot on iPhone. It's like unbelievable. No, I mean, yeah, like I feel like anything's possible. But like I totally understand what you mean because I've realized I like being more behind the scenes too. Yeah. And I love taking photos. I love taking film photos. I love like helping create direct things. I love styling and I love helping people with their projects. And I've had, you know, before I even did this, you know, I was doing YouTube and I was like, what if I just say fuck all this, stop being in front of the camera and just be behind the scenes on different projects? But yeah. I'm the same way. I'm like, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel right. So I totally understand what you mean yeah, by that. Yeah, especially when so many, I feel like so many people are fighting for like this spot to like yeah. to be able to film yourself and post it. Yeah. Especially these celebrities, man. It's crazy seeing celebrities like top on YouTube and stuff. Trying to hop on YouTube and TikTok. It's like, what? That's what I'm saying. It, it's, it, it's insane. I will, that will yeah. always shock me. Like yeah. seeing. Like Will Smith try to hop on TikTok, you're like, what? Because I feel like what we were all fighting for is to get like we think the top is traditional media, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like traditional people are seeing social media as is it? I don't know. I, I maybe, yeah. maybe maybe I'm backwards. They're so probably tired of just like the traditional like you know n normal stuff they've been doing. They're like, I want to do something different. Let's do something on social media. Yeah. We're the opposite. We're like we've been doing social media for so long and we're burnt out from it. But we're like. No, we don't. We want to do more of the traditional stuff now. Exactly. We want to be behind the scenes. We want to sit down and just talk to people. We don't want to have a camera flying in our face and like having to turn on. Like until I'm, we realize there's no money in traditional. For, for... <laughs> 
You're like, and then you're just really struggling. There's no money in traditional media for so, for social media people. Yeah. For, for like traditional like actors, that there's always money, but like when they they'll grab you and they'll they'll throw they're like, hey, you want to be in this this spot on this show or whatnot, and mm-hmm. then you see the price, you're like, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna keep doing. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just gonna st- stay on my stay in my no, lane 100%. and just keep going. Yeah. I mean, even you know, back to what we were saying about the. I don't know why this reminded me, but back to when we were saying like turning on and off with you know the social media stuff. And I'm actually really curious if you if this happens to you. I feel like I'm literally thinking about everything up until I fall asleep, and then the moment I wake up, I'm thinking immediately about everything. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. And I'm curious if I mean if you're the same way. I t- I try to. Um... I try to turn off for mm-hmm. like the last couple of hours at night, but I'm like the minute I wake up, so I do hard. think about ex- like what am I going to film, especially since I'm filming like all day, mm-hmm. every day now for the past few months. Like I, I'm going to the gym. Where like what am I going to be filming? What workouts am I doing? I'm going to have to film this, this, and this, and this after the workout. Um, where where am I going? Like which house am I going to? And what am I filming? And what am I? It's you're always thinking about shit, and then like, and um, someone's always needing your help to help them with something, yeah. you know, cause we, you know, that's, that's, that's our job. We always got to help. I think you mentioned that you were not too happy with the, oh, and actually, no, you said you were happy with the way you looked, but oh, you were y- like, but you were like, but you know what? Maybe I, I want to make myself feel a little I, better. I, 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 well, I mean, I, yes. I like, you're, are you talking about like when we go out and work, like our fitness, the fitness journey we've been yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, we've all yeah. been, we've all been, we, we've all been really just been taking care of ourselves which is awesome i love seeing everybody's on their like workout grind mm-hmm. um i know heath and i were uh did it, it started together last year february 1st i remember the day worst day worst few months of was, my life so it was, it was last so year intense. that you started your fitness last journey. year february 1st Ilya went and uh took me and heath into a room okay and he was like guys you have to if i'm going to be doing this with the two of you you both have to be very very committed we're like yeah yeah and i was start like you know obviously me heath was committed but i started asking all these questions i was like okay but like <laughs> do i do, do i get to like what what does that mean committed he's like well 8 a.m every day i was like oh my i don't know oh my god like 8 a.m does it have to be 8 a.m like can we do later he's like no, uh, I, I can only do 8 a.m. So you got to do 8 a.m. every day. You, you uh, like you have to cut everything in your diet. No drinking. No, um, no partying. No, no going out. Pretty much is like you know because you have to wake up early. Like I can't go out if I'm waking up at 8 a.m. Like I have to be in bed by like, like 10 p.m. Do this. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> damn, this is like. In my head, it was like, this is like such a huge challenge, and I was like, just, just do it, mm-hmm. just do it. And Heath is doing it. You're, you're, you're not by yourself. You're doing it with your best friend. Yeah. Just, just get it done. Heath and I, we started February 1st. We we're working out every single day. We were losing quick. We were on like a low, uh, a low calorie deficit diet. Heath and I, we love to Postmates. We love to DoorDash every day, three times a day. We would eat like <laughs> pizza and burritos. We'd get the worst shit. And we had to completely, everything we ate, we'd have to cut those calories up, like out by like, by 60%, 70%, right? We'd have to eat these meals, these tiny fucking meals. And it was not enough rice. And I love rice. And I could only have like half a cup of rice a day. And then a salad. And I was like, fuck, this sucks. Right. And not only that, I had to, we had to run three miles, three miles a day. Three miles a day is so much. Was it seven days a week? Most of the time it was seven days a week, but sometimes it was six days a week. But like every single day we'd work. Oh we were gosh. in the gym for maybe two and a half to three hours every day. Damn. Just working out. We would, It's not like we were working out the entire time. We would take our time, but like we were just really going after Focusing it. We would start with a three mile run and then we'd work out after and eat these tiny meals. Heath and I were starving. We were miserable. We were tired every day, but oh it worked. We started feeling better. Okay. We were, we were looking better. Our mental health was like we were stressed every day because we were yeah. just. But it was like it felt much better than just being unhealthy every single day. So that helped your self esteem a lot once uh, you like. Absolutely, yeah. It, it felt so good looking in the mirror and just yeah. seeing that you are like you're, a you're cutting, you're cutting. Yeah. yeah. After the first month, waking up 8 a.m. every day, I I went to Ilya and I was like, I I want to work out every day. I will continue eating the meals. I cannot wake up that early anymore. Yeah. I can't do it. I'm I'm way too tired throughout the day. The podcast, like filming the podcast, like I did, my energy was so gone. Filming, working, everything was diminished because mm-hmm. my energy was low. And I was like, I need an extra 
hour, two hours of sleep. Like I, I, I can't do 8 a.m. anymore. And that was my biggest mistake. Because once I cut that, I started. Yeah. Was... I started losing. My progress was gone. I started. Really? Yeah, because like, you're. Because what... uh, I wasn't working out with Ellie anymore, right? So, so you were just like doing your own I, thing? I was, I was doing my own thing. Also, I was working out with somebody else. But okay. the difference between Ilya and anybody else is that Ilya is like, he is intense and he knows what he wants from you and he has you on this regimen and it's like when you move to another person it like you kind of lose that momentum because he has a whole thing like he has a whole program figured Exa out for exactly you. Yeah. exactly and that yeah. was my biggest mistake and he he finished he finished the whole thing yeah i remember watching that amazing <laughs> fucking i can't believe he had abs it was nuts <laughs> I like that. I could have had that yeah. if I just kept going at 8 a.m. Do you and, regret it at all a little bit? Um, or are you like, I'm kind of happy. I like am do I, not tired. Do I regret? Oh, I don't know because whether I got there or not, I know I would have lost it so quick. So even if I you gained it all back. So even if you feel like you finished the whole thing with Heath, you feel like you would have just like it would have. I would have slipped. Like Heath still looks great. Yeah. He definitely like he does definitely doesn't look what he did that day that last day. The last day, yeah. Because when when you're on when you're on an intense diet and workout plan like that, it's really hard to stick to it. Yeah. And when you start like cheating a little, mm -hmm. you like gain it all back. It's insane. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out a way right now where I can balance it out, mm -hmm. where I'm eating healthy and I'm working out, but I'm not like killing myself. You okay. know what I mean? So and that's I'm not, where you're like, at right now. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I gained 15, 20 pounds since since that, so I don't think I'm doing such a good job. But I can say that like I'm definitely happier. That's living honestly, like this. Yeah, but it, it, not, that's all. But, but that it matters. does suck looking in the mirror. You're like, damn it! Like I could look much. I could look a lot better than this. I I yeah. I've seen the way I looked before when I was on the, when I was on yeah. Ilya's uh, program, and I just can't get myself to push to do it. What I have found out is just literally not thinking about what you can't eat, but just thinking what you need to eat more of. Eat exactly. More eat, like, I just need to eat more vegetables today. I just need to drink more water. I just need to sleep more. And I think as long as, like, you just, like, love yourself with mm -hmm. a healthy lifestyle, yeah. I think that's, like, really all that matters. So you're hot, like you said, like, you're a lot happier, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I do need to be want. more strict. Like, my cheat, like, you should be having one cheat day or two cheat days a week, maybe. Yeah. Maybe if yeah. you want to balance it out. But, man, I, I right now, I'm, like, having three, four cheat days. Like, I, I in my head, I'm, like, I only have one cheat day because like I'm eating healthy all day, but I'll eat healthy all yeah. day and then I'll go to the movie theater at night and I'll get popcorn, M&Ms. And that's why I try to avoid going out. But you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to miss out. Like all my friends are going out. Who knows the conversations are going to be, like, they're going to be flowing so around at get, that table. Do you think you get FOMO really easily then? I definitely, <laughs> th there's times where I'm just like, I don't care. I'm staying home. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I used to have a lot of FOMO back then. Okay. A lot back then, more than now. Now I, I can definitely stay home and not worry. I definitely have FOMO sometimes if, like, my you know, my the boys are going out to eat. I I, I want to go. I want to yeah, go. I want to be a part. a part of it. We're only getting older. Everyone's about to get married, and <laughs> Which is so crazy. you know you, you want to um you want to cherish and enjoy the times that you have with your best friends yeah. until. And you know, I'm, you still see your friends when everybody's yeah. married, but like there is, there you have there the dynamic a, changes there, a little yeah, bit. Exactly, yeah. there has to be a separation. You cannot yeah. expect to see your friends every day. Yeah, I think I think about that a lot. How scary it is, man. Like I feel like I was 20 last year, and I'm 30 you now. Just have a young heart. Yeah, I was. We were talking to Jason about that the other day. Jason Nash. He well, was, yeah, because he's gonna get married, right? Yeah, yeah he's about to get married. Yeah. I th right now, he is. I think he's 50 right now. I got, I got to check his famous birthdays. He's 50 and we're like, hey, how fast was it from 30 to 40? He's like, much faster than 20 and 30. Much faster. Yeah. We're like, God damn it. Well, that's scary. Speaking of marriage slash relationships, uh -huh. <laughs> you're like, oh God. <laughs> um, I actually don't know. When was the last time you were in like a serious relationship? Um, I would say like maybe three, four years ago. To okay. me, it was serious, but it was only eight months because okay. it was like one of my first relationships. Okay. So to me, it was serious, but that was like the last time. Do you think you are, you know, holding off because you're like, I just want to like live my life? Or do you think you just haven't found, you know, the right girl to <sighs> settle down with? It's, it, I mean, it, not only that, because when the right girl comes around, then, then it doesn't really yeah. matter anymore. But I think I've been so focused on trying to figure out what I want to do in my life and yeah. I'm constantly having to run out of the house and go to someone's house for a few hours and going here and going here and 
the last thing in my head that I feel like I can do right now is be in a relationship unless this person understands exactly what you're doing, what this yeah. lifestyle is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's what, especially when you're doing this, I feel like you have to try to find, sometimes it's really nice to find the complete opposite of you, mm -hmm. but I feel that, I feel like that will last, that'll, that'll, that'll last for only so long until like somebody will get over it. Yeah. The per, I, I feel like the person that's not, that's not loving this lifestyle, are, they're going to be like, why do you have to go to this person's house and do a podcast? Like, because I don't have to do it, but like I should do it yeah, because yeah. you always have to help somebody else with their work. And they're like, you're not getting paid. It's like, no, I understand. <laughs> I'm not getting paid. It's just, this yeah. is just what that is. It's like the code of conduct of the internet is like, you always yeah. have to help other in this people. industry. It's exactly, like, exactly. okay, you're doing a favor for me. I'll do a favor for you. Yeah. Like we'll help each other out. Exactly. And Okay, that makes sense. The, the, the time will come. I, I, it could be like a, just also a very, I don't know if it's like more of an immature way of thinking or yeah. just a scared of commitment, but I just feel like I'm just so focused on filming and getting that bread. I mean, you that's great. I mean? It, it, and it, There's nothing wrong with that either. Will last. Who knows how long yeah. this will last. And like when yeah. I remember when I was, I was in a re relationship, I feel like my workflow went completely down. I wasn't filming. So, I wasn't yeah. filming as much. I wasn't... Um, like focused? I wasn't focused. Yeah. And I and I know I it's hard for me to get focused. I mean that's really so. mature to like realize that you're like, okay, no, I just need to keep grinding and like I will get there. Yeah. Do you think um do you feel like you're not like trailing behind because I feel like you know you said a lot of your friends are gonna starting to get married now mm -hmm. and stuff. Does that make you nervous at all? Um, it or definitely no? makes me nervous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like everybody else could get married and I'll be left alone, and then I'm looked as like this like oh here comes Uncle Zane, which is like the <laughs> worst. I think about that all the time. Like oh my that's god, so that's a fucking funny. nightmare. Um, and I have the perfect personality to be that one guy on the, uh, just the, on the single side. dude. Yeah, just like. <laughs> It just imagine me when I'm 65, just like gold rings, a fucking button up t-shirt, just smells like cigarettes. Just like, oh, ha, ha, let me see the kids. It is like fucking disgusting. And I just hope that never happens. But in the end of the day, I feel like it's just not my time yet. And I feel yeah. like it will come at some point. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I always say this. I think there's never a timeline for anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, look, like you said, Jason is getting married and he's 50. Exactly. It exactly. That probably makes you feel a little better. Yeah. Right. But he was also know. married and got kids. He did the whole thing and it, it, it's, <laughs> it's like, round okay. two. Yeah. B but I, that's actually something like I get worried about that. I think it's just social, like social wise, like every, everybody around me. Yeah, yeah. But I think I'm pretty confident that I'll be good and I'll figure it out. Okay, well, Zane, we're coming to an end to our delightful conversation. All right, yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> At the end of every uh, conversation with my guests, I like to ask them if they have any sort of advice or words of wisdom for anyone that's like struggling <laughs> with like, you know, confidence issue or like self love issues or something. God, so th these are the questions I can never answer. I He's always like, get ah. asked. Advi like as soon as like, do you have any advice? I'm like, I'm the worst at public advice. <sighs> it could be so simple too. Yeah, no, oh no, it'll be simple. Trust me. <laughs> like, don't, um, it'll be three words. Don't oh, worry. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all constantly trying to figure out ways to take care of other people and make other people feel, uh, be happy or, or just focus on other people. But I think the most important thing to do in the end is like take care of yourself, make sure you're good, make sure you're healthy, make sure you're happy. And once you do that, I feel like a lot of good things come to you. So focus on yourself and yeah. the positives and stuff like that. Okay. And stuff like that. And stuff like that. You know, stuff Just like that. <laughs> dude, really professional. Dude, if I came on the podcast, stuff like that. <laughs> Welcome to Zane where we talk about stuff and stuff like that. <laughs> God, look, I'm getting, I'm still getting the hang of this. Mm -hmm. I, you know how you're nervous? I'm also nervous. Oh, no, you, okay. I, I, I've been doing this for three years, and I still, I'm <laughs> still bad at these. I will never, will never, not be nervous before I do something like this. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me. I really course. appreciate it. Of course, thank you for being here. All right, guys. Well, I didn't say this earlier. I didn't introduce Zane. I messed up. I'm not perfect, but. Today we had on Zayn Jazzy, <laughs> and he is a content creator, uh, entrepreneur, and podcast host. So go check out Komoda and what's the podcast called? Unfiltered? Zayn and Heath Unfiltered. Zayn and Heath Unfiltered. Go and check it out. <laughs> Thank you. Our last cheers. 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 Bye, guys. <laughs> Let's walk out. <laughs> Let's do it. Empty. <laughs>